Magandang araw po sa inyo. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series si Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang patat nito ay walang hangganin. Ito ang PN Talks. Ako nga pala si Lucio Dadang at ako ang inyong learning from home buddy sa episode na ito. Ngayong araw, uh, ibabahagi ko po sa inyo ang aking mga karanasan o experiences tungkol sa leading and culture learning when a teacher becomes the principal. Here are the topics that I'd like to cover with this session. The leader's role, the teacher roles, my learning process, the culture of learning and my teacher practices, and the leader's behavioral difference. We are all aware that leader's role is focused on improving the quality of teaching and learning for students and adults. It's in modeling, creating, and sustaining a community that supports all learners. And of course, leaders are expected to maintain an environment that promotes collaboration, engagement, and inspired learning. With the leadership roles that we have for these, Let's go to what are the rules of a teacher? And I'd like to reflect on that with the following questions. How does a teacher play the role of a mentor in improving the quality of learning? What is the role of a teacher as a mediator in sustaining a community of learning? And how does a teacher inspire others to promote and maintain inspired learning? In With all these questions, I usually ask myself when I transition from being a teacher to a principal. As a teacher, you have your leadership skills that you already have as you practice your teaching skills. So as a principal, I was able to utilize and look at what teaching skills and leadership skills do I have that I can actually use in my learning process as I transition from being a teacher to a principal. And that led me to the understanding of how leadership works in leading a culture of learning. So let me take you back to my classroom. And if I'm going to teach right now, and if I go back to teaching, you would expect that Every day, students will come into my classroom. And when students are tired and I can feel that um, they need some brain break, then I have some brain break activities. And then of course, at the end of the day, you want to measure and you want to collect data or data from your students, uh, how much they've learned through assessments. So it could be a diagnostic, a formative, or a summative. And that would be your basis, or my basis to reteach and offer tutorials for my students. Now with this experience being in the classroom, I look at it as a principal looking at my daily and weekly activities. So at the start of the day, um, we have a PA system where I could play fun music before the first block of the day starts. Sometimes students request for the songs to play. That actually sets the, the tone of the mode and the emotion of the day objectives or goals of the day are being announced as well after the music. Um, key tasks for the day are identified by myself. And sometimes when teachers come in to announce or some counselors, they come in to announce uh, reminders for the students. Uh, every Monday, we have a student assembly where activities are clearly explained at the beginning of the week. And during the day, of course, in our schedule, we have brain breaks mid-morning for the whole school. At lunch, I have an open door policy where students visit me 
for consultations and some friendly chats. And then at the end of the day, uh, if students need student support, uh, we have the Connect Center, we have the evening study support, peer tutorials, and other student supports that we offer. It depends on the students that we want to help. So if you look at my organized activities for my classroom and for my daily life as a principal and how I see the week would look like in school, it's kind of similar. But looking at um, the teacher practices that I had or for us teachers and how it helps being a principal, I asked this question to just reflect on, you know, which teacher practices help me in leading a culture of learning. First, teachers are good storytellers. How the culture of learning could be helped and supported with the power of using stories. The potential of sharing stories as a way of impacting a learning culture is actually really helpful. According to Jay Shetty, if you want to understand a culture, listen to the stories. But if you want to change a culture, change the stories. So in integrating the power of stories to learning culture, the narration of stories, or as we say, the past events, they can look at what happened or the students can look at what happened. Even the teachers and the parents can make good intentional decisions about how to handle memories relating it to what's happening at the present moment. According to Daniel Goldman's Primal Leadership book, um, he said leaders manage meaning for a group, offering a way to interpret and so react emotionally to a given situation. That means, you know, when you watch movies, when you read books, or some stories that you hear that are um, emotionally connected with you, you feel that the feeling of the character. We feel the feeling of the main person in the movie. And how are we going to utilize this for school? Transformational learning is really important. So if you are a formal or informal leader, you can actively curate your team stories. Of course, I think many of us are using this. A story-like format to draft open remarks for staff, uh, during parents' meetings or any gatherings. Writing a regular newsletter or bulletins that tell your school's evolving story. Or, you know, leaders can design adult learning experiences that promote story sharing. So I'll give you an example. At the start of the school year, when teachers arrive from the summer holiday, we always have this activity where we have the professional development and we call this a story orientation. So what happens, the teachers are seated in a circle or in a round discussion, and they are, were, okay, they are they were asked um, to bring artifacts, uh, things that could represent themselves, something that they could share a story that are meaningful. And on this storytelling activity, there is a meaningful conversation happening. This help and aids the group to set the goals for the start of the school year. You know, when you're doing this activity, we have to pay attention to our school's core memories, the experiences that our teachers had during the previous school year, where the new teachers that would newly join the group, you know, they, they get to feel and they get to understand the culture already of the school. It also gives a cue to our brain to actively manage meaning for the team. It will also craft a hopeful, forward-moving storyline. And as a listening leader, we could be the curators who collect 
arrange and highlight stories to affirm our shared humanity and make the impossible seem impossible. So all these things, just storytelling, actually really give meaningful discussions to each person involved in storytelling. So at the end of the school year, we go back to that circle activity and with that, we discuss what went through during the school year, all the struggles and the success stories that we had. And then we are all going to also decide what goals are we going to have for the next school year. Now, how does it um, affect our students? Now, as I mentioned before, every Monday, we have regular student assembly and the students are involved in this orientation, the weekly student orientation, where students are invited to share the stories of their previous experiences, highlights on the previous week, the activities that they had, and the coming activities that they want to organize. This actually set the tone of the week where students are engaged in the school culture. Now, the stories bring collective attention to what is working already in the school. They give you ideas to what to look for in your school. And when you see it, notice it, tell that story. Because during hard times, we can tackle those hard things or things that we struggle in the school, how we choose to ask and tell a story. That was actually mentioned by Bush in his book. Looking at teachers, again, as good team players, how leaders use the power of collaboration in improving the school culture of learning. We could ask this question uh, as a team and we could see how the power of collaboration would be able to assist us in making decisions. I often ask these questions to my team. What practices, results, or experiences will you amplify to build collective efficacy? And I think this had been a culture of learning for each and every school around the world. Team collaboration is really important. But what conditions that are present in our classrooms and schools that need to be challenged so our students and staff explore their full selves? And as a leader, how do you create and provide opportunities for collaboration? So in my school, we have what we call the learning triad, where different teachers from different subject area uh, with Chinese and international teachers collaborating together for the whole school year. They start to do some teamwork, team activity, and then they have their um, collaborative team goal for the whole school year. Here are some more of the pictures. And so we continue on talking about the teachers. And we believe that teachers inspire others. And how do teachers inspire students, their colleagues, and the people around them? They are facilitators and they're a good coach. So how do leaders use the power of coaching in leading a culture of learning? In coaching, we all know that people are respected according to their individual differ, uh, differences. So we have to remember that people can solve their own problems and find their own solutions. We have to remember that supporting thinking, people can learn and they can grab the learning from their experiences. And in coaching, we can empower people uh, and as well as inquiry of thinking creates resourcefulness or produce resourcefulness to the people that we coach. But the main point of coaching is that there is no giving advice, no telling, 
or no giving action steps. Sometimes you want to give the solutions right away, but in coaching as the leaders in the culture of learning, we have to give some um, room for the people that we are advising, for the people that we are coaching. With all these skills that we are talking about and uh, things that we could use in leading the culture of learning in schools, with the situation that we are in, in this pandemic era, we have been leading in turbulent times. How the skills of being a leader and how the teaching skills had been a tool or we use the skills that we learned in leading culture of learning have been very helpful, helpful in leading during the pandemic time. So in, in, in leading and being a principal, we have got to practice some self-reflection and self-assessment on how we are as a leader. And according to um, the authors of Multipliers, um, Wiseman and McCone, they identified two types of leaders, the multipliers and diminishers. Um, I will discuss more about this. So I like these types of, um, uh, I mean, the identification of these types of leaders. Uh, it guides me to actually reflect on what behavior I need to emulate or avoid. So what's a multiplier and what's a diminisher? So a multiplier leader used their intelligence or his or her intelligence to bring out the intelligence and ability of everyone else. So they do this by assuming that people can improve. Intelligence and capability are very common because these traits are so common, their team should be full of people who have them. Therefore, as a leader, all they need to do is create an environment that lets people use their intelligence and capability and improve their skill. Sounds really nice. The diminishers though, they rely on their own intelligence. They assume that people can't improve. Intelligence and capability are very rare. They are one of the few people who have these rare traits. Because of these rare traits, you know, it's unlikely that their team includes very many people who have them. Therefore, as the leader, they need to be very hands-on to make up for everyone else's lack of capability and inability to improve themselves. So how is it, or how does it look like working with a diminisher? Um, according to the book, um, working for a diminisher is exhausting and demoralizing. What's a diminisher mindset? They think people won't figure this out without them, or people won't figure things out without them. And what are these diminisher traits? They tend to hoard resources and underutilize talent. They show off their expertise. They make high stage decisions themselves. They micromanage and become roadblocks to progress and stifle the intelligence of others. How about the multipliers? The multiplier, uh, working with multipliers can be exhausting, but it's also accelerating. It's not a burnout experience, it's a growth experience. So what's a multiplier mindset? People are smart and figure it out. That's sounds really nice. What are the multiplier traits? They find and develop talented people. They give people ownership and invest in success. They inspire sound decision-making. They challenge team members to help them grow and they amplify and grow the intelligence of others. Looking at those two types of leaders, are you a multiplier or are you a diminisher? But no one is perfect. Sometimes, or maybe at times, we could be, or I could be even, an accidental diminisher. 
So when exposed to the idea of multipliers and diminishers, you know, it's always um, good to reflect. Am I a multiplier or am I a diminisher? You know, identifying would be good, but a better question to ask because we're not perfect and we could be accidentally becoming or acting or behaving a diminisher, you know? It would be better to ask, how might I turn a potentially diminishing moment into a multiplier moment? That's a very good question. So in the principles of coaching, best leaders ignite intelligence. They apply essential multiplying techniques within the coaching framework to unleash staff's potential. So in the power of coaching, as a leader leading my school, I look at our teacher growth plans at the beginning of the year and all throughout the year, leading them to a reflective practice by integrating some of these guiding questions during our staff meetings, when we do professional development, because we have once a month professional development sessions. And when I send emails, I attach some inspiring quotes, some funny end of the week quotes, quotes rather. Um, when we go through a big task over the week, um, um, not forgetting to thank them and being grateful of all the contributions that we did for the team, sending that to the emails and also giving them some boost of self-confidence being teachers and educators. And sometimes if I stumble on uh, really nice TED Talk videos, I share it to them, you know, planting the seed and just reminding them of, um, you know, having some um, small bites of professional development is necessary. And during student assembly, so usually I have this um, small messages to the students, like even just a simple word like this already creates a buzz. And this is a buzz in the school. So everyone um, knows what JJM is. It's, <laughs> it means we graduate with good marks. And at the end of the day, the students are reminded every day is a chance to be better than the day before. So in leading a culture of learning, we need to understand that the idea of leadership is the process of influencing the activities of an organized group toward goal setting and goal achievement based more on personal credibility than authority. So as a summary, looking back how teachers skills of leadership influenced my skills in leading a school. Teachers are good storytellers. Teachers are good team players. And teachers are multipliers. So in leading a school, in the culture of learning, principals facilitate an environment that promotes engagement, collaboration, and inspire learning. So I would say as an educator, as a principal of a school, I am looking after what are my behavioral footprint. Asking myself the questions, what's my personal learning story? And for you, what's your story? In my school, I am leading a culture where we choose to be a mindful multiplier. And at the end of the day, regardless of the differences of culture, we choose to be kind. Ito po si Sultadam, ang inyong um, principal, na sana po ay meron po kayong natutunan mula po sa akin mga ibinahaging mga experiences at mga uh, learning process kung saan ako pinatuto sa aking mga karanasan. So, 
Uh, i-comment po ang inyong mga katanungan at mga kuro-kuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. At huwag kalimutang i-like at i-share ang episode natin. Sa muli, ako po si Lucio Dadam at sumain ang PNU Talk.